Mike Gravel has uh, passed away and um, lived into his 90s and uh, certainly, um, you know, lived, I, I think, an impressive uh, life, um, left his mark without a doubt on this country. Um, I think it's not too hard to find the um, uh, video of him reading into the record, the Pentagon Papers, just as a reminder for people, I think most people know this, but, but, but some might not. You, you have wide latitude as a senator or a congressperson to, um, to release documents by reading them into the record. You cannot, you, you have basically an immunity um, for whatever you say on the, uh, as long as it's not a foul of the, you know, the rules uh, of the, of the house and the Senate in terms of like personal insults and whatnot. Um, but you have wide berth to, um, to do these, uh, to say these things. And by reading the Pentagon papers into the record in the Senate, what he did was essentially <clears throat> sort of a de facto declassification. Would you, would you describe it that way, Matt? And, um, and made it possible for reporters and everyone else to essentially um, examine those papers, uh, reprint them. Um, they didn't actually reprint the papers. What they did is they reprinted the record that he included into the, um, the, the Senate record. Uh, exhausting, the idea of reading 4,000 pages. Um, I mean, I think it took him into well into, what, two in the morning, something like that. Oh, it was insane. Yeah, and uh, he, he broke down because he lived a life of anti-imperialist, anti-war passion. And, um, I mean, I think that that's how he'll be remembered as somebody who was not singularly focused, but incredibly focused on, you know, one of the great horrors perpetuated by mega powers like the like the united states and you know mostly us for for the past uh years and and he was he was um somebody who is i i think you know uh in incredibly dedicated in that project and that's how he will be remembered and and uh, what was amazing about the pentagon papers it basically um allowed the american public to realize that they were sort of getting lies <laughs> from the uh not sort of uh from the <laughs> Um, the military in terms of things are going great. And now, um, if that sounds familiar to you, uh, you might remember the Iraq war or particularly the Afghanistan war, uh, which now after 20 years is, um, we are finally leaving Afghanistan. Um, here is a Mike Gra uh, Gravel. He served as a, um, two terms as the senator from Alaska from 1969 to 81 and um, and then ran for president mostly as like a message campaign to uh, to push the idea that we should not be in Iraq uh, in 2008 um, and uh, and Afghanistan um, here is uh, a clip of him in 2008, right? This is the Democratic primary yes. from 2008. Here's a clip of him uh, during that primary. Senator Gravel, <laughs> at a forum earlier this year, I want to get this right. You said it doesn't matter whether you are elected president or not. So then why are you here tonight? Shouldn't debates be for candidates who are in the race to win the race? Ryan, you're right. I made that statement. But that's before I had a chance to stand with them a couple, three times. It's like going into the Senate. You know, the first time you get there, you're all excited. My God, how did I ever get here? Then about six months later, you say, how the hell did the rest of them get here? <laughs> yeah. and, and I got to tell you, after standing up with them, some of these people frighten me. They frighten me. When, when you have mainline candidates that turn around and say that there's nothing off the table with respect to Iran, that's code for using nukes, nuclear devices. I got to tell you, I'm president of the United States. 
There will be no preemptive wars with nuclear devices. To my mind, it's immoral, and it's been immoral for the last 50 years as part of American foreign policy. Let's use a little moderator discretion here. Senator Gravel, that's a weighty charge. Who on this stage exactly tonight uh, uh, worries you uh, so much? Well, I would say the top tier ones. The top tier ones. They made statements. Oh, Joe, I'll include you too. You have a certain arrogance. You want to. You want to tell the Iraqis how to run their country. I got to tell you, we should just play get out. Just play get out. It's their country. They're asking us to leave, and we insist on staying there. And why not get out? What harm is it going to do? Oh, that you hear the statement. Well, my God, the soldiers will have died in vain. The entire deaths of Vietnam died in vain. And they're dying in vain right this very second. You know what's worse than a soldier dying in vain? is more soldiers dying in vain. That's I mean, that, um, that aged pretty well. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, uh, we, uh, particularly on a day today where we just bombed Iraq again. And um, the idea as to whether we stayed in 2009, 2010 um, in Iraq, made no difference whatsoever. Um, what's going to happen in Afghanistan? Very difficult to say that our prolonged involvement in Afghanistan made any difference whatsoever. Um, I mean, in fact, we very much created a lot more bloodshed. And, and, and it's very hard to argue that we're going to leave them, uh, you know, a year from now, when uh, the Taliban ultimately uh, <clears throat> take over, um, if there's going to be really any measurable difference. I mean, that is the thing, is that, you know... Um, and in Iraq, we certainly did absolutely nothing except harm. I mean, I think that that can be... Uh, th th there's no stabilization. We've killed hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, and that was, you know, the, the twin projects he was talking about there. To... to, to immense arrogance by Joe Biden, as he said, as he laughs at him. I mean, Hillary Clinton, Obama, they were all laughing at him as he said these, I think, incontrovertibly moral and accurate statements. Should also say the idea of somebody running for president and not running to win, but rather to carry a message onto the national platform. It's sort of absurd premise to that question that Brian Williams had. Uh, maybe at that time there was... Uh, and particularly, we've seen subsequent to that, uh, half the people run in the uh, Republican uh, campaign as just a way of doing a book launch. Uh, I mean, uh, or to, you know, but to build a basically it. a two or three year uh, scam. But they don't say that they're not running to win. Right. So so the media helps them uphold that fiction as opposed to Gravel being honest about what he was trying to do. It's certainly more noble than what you say running to increase your chances for higher office, maybe to be, if you're a representative, to be a senator or to get a cushy lobbying job after you leave government or to sell books. Um, yeah, I would say Gravel's ah. purpose is certainly more noble than that. I mean, when we talk about just sheer nobility, I'm not sure that running for a as a message campaign isn't a more noble endeavor than actually running to become president in yeah. some instances. But um, be that as it may, uh, rest in power, uh, Mike Gravel. We should say, full disclosure, you did a video for the Gravel Institute. I did. I don't know exactly how uh, directly involved. Uh, well, I didn't I get think... paid for it. So, I mean, I don't think it's really any And I don't know if Mike Gravel had any operative uh, a aspect of it. But I think they were. Um, but the bottom line is. And folks should check out that video. Yes, I did. It's on socialism. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.